Yeah, I think today was everything going my side. Like when I need to play, uh, like to make a good surf, I was making good surf uh, every time. When I need him to miss, he was missing. So everything was like today on my side. And on top of that, I was playing uh, good. I don't know, I, I, was make, I was making good shots, good winners. And uh, yeah, and in the end, I was able to win in three sets. So I'm really happy. Congratulations once again. Thank Questions? You. Reem. Hi, Andre Reem of Sport.com. Congratulations. Andre, we all noticed that after matches, you stay for at least 15, 20 minutes signing every autograph and taking photos. You do it small tournaments, big tournaments. Yeah. I'm curious, why is that so important for you and does it ever get too much? Uh, mm, well, the, the, sorry, the beginning of the question was doesn't get uh, too much, you say? Ask. I forgot. Yeah, the, why does it mean so much ah, to, to do that? It? Because you do it no matter uh, what. I think, I mean, first of all, this is the f easiest way to be grateful for the people that they came to support, players, tennis, and this is, this is the easiest way to be grateful. And... Uh, yeah, so in the end I'm doing this and of course I'm not getting bored of it because it's part of the job. It's, I don't know, it's like a recovery or play match, warm up or to do press conference now. It's part of the sport and you have to, I think you have to be grateful for you, for the things that you have in your job and that's it. Willie. Willie Weinbaum from ESPN. Obviously, we don't know for sure who your next opponent will be, so I'd like to ask you about the two possibilities separately. First, Rafa, how would you describe your history against him and your thoughts about the possibility of going up against him? Uh, I don't know. There's no history. But, I mean, we played three times once here when I was a kid, then one more time when I was already top 10 at the ATP finals, but I was not ready mentally. And the last our meeting in Monte Carlo, I was uh, I was ready already mentally and uh, game wise and I was lucky that much he didn't play his best and I was able to win it. So we'll see. I mean, if it's Rafa, especially on a, uh, during the Grand Slams, if I have nothing to lose. I have to go for the match and that's it. And in case if it's Francis, uh, it's a tough player. We play a couple of times. I lost him. I lost to him last year here at the US Open. So for sure he will try to use the energy, the crowd to to be more pumped, to play better tennis. And I just with him, I need to wait for my moment and to to use it. What do you remember most from that match against Francis? That he was yeah, that he was uh, he was trying to use crowd uh, to to play better tennis, to and to take energy from the people, to to make a better shots. I don't know, be more, be better physically. Like he was using crowd really well. Okay. Hi, Neil McClemon from The Mirror. Just on today's match, were you surprised by um, Cam's level today? He didn't seem to show his usual consistency. And how much was that down to the, how well you played as well in your tactics? I think, like I said in the beginning, today was everything on my side. I played really good match, consistent match, plus uh, Cameron, uh, uh, maybe, like I said, the, the, the impo all the important moments when I need to make a ace or to make a first surf, uh, always happened that I was making it. And every time that Cameron, he had a chance, every time he was missing or a beat or something, or I was playing good shots. So every, every, every important moment that something was happening was always to my side. Normally when you play matches, especially these kind of matches, always goes for both sides and then it's different match. But today, since the first break point, everything was like on my side, you know, and that's why it helps me to be more confident and probably for Cameron opposite he was uh, start to get more tight and tight and tight and when you're losing two sets to zero and you're you know that uh, you're playing to be in quarters it's also mentally stuff you start to be even more uh, tight James great I newspaper Andre you, when you played Cam I think for the first time in St Petersburg two years ago you beat him very heavily two and one I think um, and I, while I appreciate that you won quite comfortably today, I wonder if you could compare the player that you beat very heavily then and the player now, because they're obviously quite different players, I think. Yeah, and uh, uh, for sure it's uh, two different players. I mean, at that time, I, I don't know which ranking he was, 
maybe I don't know if he was top 50 maybe around top 50 so he was just upcoming and uh, now he's top 10 he win one ATP Masters and then he played so many good tournaments finals uh, against top players and uh, he improved a lot. I mean, obviously, he started to serve much, much better, harder, uh, better directions. Uh, he improved his forehand because I remember in St. Petersburg he was not really playing aggressive with the forehand and he was uh, struggling a bit. Uh, when you play hard to his forehand, he was not able to you know, keep the same intensity of the speed and now he play aggressive, he change directions, he play hard, he answer harder, he improve a lot his forehand and obviously physical wise he is much faster, he is uh, physically much stronger, he is able to play on a good level, on a high level for a long time, not only one set, he he able to play for three hours, four hours on a, and keep high level and yeah, that's why he's top ten in the end. It's Rob Moore from the Sun. Um, if it is Rafa in the next round, you played in Monte Carlo in 2021. How much of a better player are you since that match? I don't know. Played? We'll see. In my case, there is no... I hope I'm a better player, but with me, you never know. So we'll see. Uh, the only one good thing that I have nothing to lose if it's Rafa. So I can go for the match and that's it. have been past the quarterfinal of yeah. a slam. It's the one thing that's just... <laughs> missing from your seat. Why is that and what do you need to do, do you think? Uh, in the beginning it was like I was playing or rough or some player that was at that moment I was not ready to beat and then other matches mental. Okay. Do you mind question? Hey Andre, uh, do you mind from The Guardian? Uh, just like, over the summer you, it hasn't always been... Oh, sorry, sorry, again. Um, over the summer you, you haven't had your best results obviously in Cincinnati and um, uh, Canada. So I'm wondering just how you're feeling then and, and what are you most happy about with how you've performed kind of uh, come to the US Open and obviously won now four matches in a row? Yeah, I mean, uh, first of all, I'm happy to be in quarters. It's a great result. And uh, I'm happy that every match I'm playing better and better. Like if you compare first round and second and third and fourth, my level increasing and I'm really happy with that. So nothing much to say, just we'll see who will win, Francis or Rafa, and then I will try to go full and to give my best I can for the quarterfinal. Hi, Andre, Matt Trollope from OzOpen.com. Uh, before this tournament, you lost your last four, five setters, but this week you've won both of them. And I just wonder what is behind that change and is that helping your confidence as you keep going? Mm, nothing. Uh, I mean, I, I was not even thinking that last ones I lost. Uh, it was not even in my head because I'm not counting if how many I win five sets, how many I lost five sets. The only thing that uh, I know for sure I will lose also so many five sets in the future and for sure I will win more five sets in the future. And the, the difference this tournament that I was able to keep Myself, better. I was able to keep uh, my emotions in a in the right way, and that was the difference. Okay. Bream, final question. Andre, after the U.S. Open, either Rafa or Alcaraz or Ruth will be number one in the world. I'm curious, how much are you paying attention to the race at the top, and what would it mean for a teenager like Alcaraz to be number one on tour? Uh, first of all. I'm not paying really attention because it's not me, <laughs> so it's like uh, less pressure. Like okay, let them let them fight, let them feel this pressure better for me because uh, like this, all of them will get more tight. And uh, I mean, for teenager like Charlie to be number one, I, f I think it's something unreal, uh, like uh, something that every player dream to to achieve. And I think in his case, it's just a matter of time. Even if it's not going to happen this tournament, he will still have many more chances later on. So it's not about only this US Open.